on his fake news show, Jon Stewart takes on bullies and blowhards in politics and media. I want you to admit that there is such a thing as white privilege. That's all I want. I know, to I knew you were right. He's now heralded as today's Walter Cronkite, the most trusted man in America. But through it all, when asked about his agenda or if he has any political plans, he says... I'm a comedian first. A comedian who is so respected, we learned recently that he was seriously considered for the job of hosting the prestigious network news program... This is Meet the Press. And now he's written and directed his first movie about Canadian-Iranian journalist Maziar Bahari. Can you tell me why I'm here? That's what happened to foreign spies caught on Iranian soil. Who was held and interrogated in a notorious Iranian prison for four months after Mahmoud Ahmadinejad was re-elected in 2009. Authorities had been monitoring Bahari's coverage of protests and then saw this tape segment he'd done with The Daily Show correspondent Jason Jones about being a spy. I was told he'd go by the code name Pistachio. The Iranian regime didn't think it was funny. Both sides are idiots, basically. And used it against Bahari during his interrogation. What do I have in common with you? So can you tell me why <laughs> just... Uh, journalists meet up with this American spy on the evil learned list. I wondered what Hello. Stuart thought of the joke now. Hi, John. How are you? Wendy Mesley. Nice so to great see you, Wendy. I met up with him on his visit to promote his new film. Good movie. Thank you. Not very funny, though. You know what? We'll make it funnier next time. A little more slapstick, a little more farce. We'll yeah, get it in there. Not really a comedy. Not a comedy. So I guess th the obvious question is, the, the journalist, Mazir Bahari, he yes. got thrown in jail in Iran and tortured mm -hmm. after doing a bit of satire on your show. He did other things, too, as a, as a journalist. Yeah. But was there a sense on your part of, of guilt or responsibility? Uh, I think there was an immediate sense of panic when we first found out. That being said, this was at a time of a crackdown, so we were, you know, we were aware that there were thousands that were being arrested, but obviously your first concern is to do no harm and had we done any harm. So that was your immediate reaction. Yeah. But at some point you decided to make a movie. Was part of the decision making a, the, your, a sense of responsibility towards him? No. Um, it's your first movie. Yes. Uh, once he came, you know, once he was released and he came on the show, he and I just became friends just because he's a, a, a terrific guy. And he was writing a book about his experiences. And, you know, they had connected him, having nothing to do with us, they connected him as being a spy. When he came back, he asked me if I would help him get it made into a movie. And I, knowing nothing about getting things made into movies, said, sure, happy, yeah, let's do I that. know some people. I know people. Uh, and uh, I didn't. And, you know, my feeling was it's an urgent story, it's a really relevant story, and we couldn't wait 10 years, 12 years to make it. But it sounds like you don't feel responsibility for what happened. I mean, even in your movie, there's oh, a reference. To him. Yeah. Oh, oh, for, for his getting arrested? Yeah. Yeah, no. No, he disabused me of that. The, but the Iranians said to him, you know, hey, you were even on the Daily Show. With, with but they didn't know it was the spot. Daily Show. There, but there was that piece of tape that yes. helped incriminate him. There, yes. Uh, there's a connection to it in the sense that, like, they mentioned our show in a dark interrogation room in Evan Prison. But they didn't have any evidence that he was a spy. So as in grasping for straws, I mean, they also spent a lot of time asking about Anton Chekhov and Pauly Shore. You know, they checked his Facebook page. It was not, the reason he was arrested was not that. The reason he was connected to the Green Movement as a spy was not that. That was the piece of absurdist theater that they came across, along with many, many other pieces that they believed in their grasping of straws was evidence that he was a spy. I just find it interesting because people have always accused you of being very important. <laughs> yes. And you always do that. Laugh? Yeah. That's oh, funny. Because that's, you know, when people accuse you of something you have no control over, all you can do is laugh. What I have no control over my own importance or lack of importance. The only thing I have control over is my work. So I can make it as good as I can. And hopefully uh, people uh, appreciate that or like it. But the idea somehow that you can design your own importance seems, I, I, I don't know, people say, well, how do you feel about people getting their news from you? And I think, 
I don't feel anything. I feel what I feel when I make things. You can control your intention. You know, uh, the Iranian government has already condemned the film as a, a Zionist plot. Well, that's where you got your money from, apparently. Exactly. Zionist, yes. But that's my point. So if somebody says to me, how do you feel about that? You say, I, I don't feel anything about that because it's, <laughs> it's, I have no control over what they say. So does that change the way that you look at your satire? No, no. That would be asking us to get in the minds of idiots. And you can't work that way. Mm. Regimes that are authoritarian can weaponize anything. They've weaponized much less than satire. If it wasn't that, they weaponized his Facebook page. Uh, the fact that he had listed Anton Chekhov and uh, Leonard Cohen as interests, that was weaponized. Everything that he did was weaponized. So the fact that you create something that is not uh, useful to an authoritarian regime or that you make a pertinent effort to try and create something that will not be useful for them is a fool's errand because they don't need it to be uh, absurd or damning. They're going to turn it into what they turn it into. Does that, do, mm -hmm. you, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's, I, I sort of understand what you're saying, but you're, you're saying, should I make my work fundamentalist proof? And I'm saying to you, that's an impossibility. It was a guy dressed in a kafia, wearing sunglasses, sitting in a cafe going, I'm an American spy. As such, tell me why I shouldn't be afraid of you. Now, how do you idiot proof that segment? And I'm, I'm asking you truly, because you, you, seem, you seem interested in the destructive effect of satire. I'm just wondering if it changes the way that, like this had arguably real repercussions. You, you look at, the, here was a guy who was on your show, he ended up being tortured and in jail right. after he was on but your who, show. It's I guess what I'm saying is, where does the responsibility lie for those real world repercussions? Is, oh, my, yeah. is my honest question to you. Yeah, I don't think there's any problem with you doing that. I just so why, what makes you curious about it then? Because when people accuse you of being important or having a real impact in the real world, you kind of laugh. I mean, you are important. You are, they call you the most trusted man in America and but you don't like to go there, but maybe you but are that powerful. But, but you're asking me to assess something that is impossible for me to assess, is it not? But you are a phenomena in the sense that when the big nooky nooks stepped down and of the, the big anchors of the big shows in the States, they kind of thought, well, John Stewart should do that because that's who everybody believes these days. I mean, I, there I you see, you're like, oh, that's so silly, but it's true. But I think in some respects, it is a statement of protest against institutions that people feel have been degraded. And I don't think it is particularly, and even if it was, it's still asking me to assess something that is out of the realm of my control. It's not designed to make us important. It's designed as a cathartic expression of how we feel about events. This what is degraded it. The institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what degraded the institutions are probably uh, financial culpability, are probably uh, decision making that occurred based on pure instinct of putting news into the entertainment. Uh, uh, facilities so that you've created what degraded it is 24-hour news operations that are built for cat catastrophic events but within the absence of those catastrophic events have to gin up urgency so that they can continue to get the kind of eyeballs and the way that you gin up urgency is through conflict and sensationalism so what degrades their credibility is their own business models and if people react to that and they see something that is uh, that they find less within that, it's a protest vote to some extent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, who's the most trusted newsman in America? And you would say, uh, Brian Williams, Diane Sawyer, uh, Bob Schieffer, or John Stewart. A lot of people may vote for me, but that's a protest vote. A lot of people would vote, if D was a dildo rolled in glitter, people would vote for that. because that they're. I do. Is it so degraded that it can't be fixed? Like, would you never run for office because it's just impossible? <laughs> like is that? Well, I, I don't think that's my skill set, but I certainly don't think, it, do I think it's beyond repair? Not, not in the slightest. I think, I think those institutions existed for a reason and they grew up for a reason 
But do you but still have hope that it in your absolutely. lifetime? Really? Absolutely. I don't think it's that far away. I think that there is, you know, there's a pendulum swing, there's a continuum. That's what we hear. We keep waiting for things to, and your movie even but ends with this idea of the, the line is in, in their heart, the torturers. Yeah. They know that this has to end someday. Like They you, cannot win. Yeah, that they yeah. can't win. That's right. Because uh, oppression isn't sustainable. And we've learned that through history, through colonialism, through empire. You know, this type of political system and manipulation is not sustainable. It comes at too heavy a cost to those that uh, perpetrate it. So there's all this concern these days that young people aren't, you know, they're not following the issues as seriously because they're not reading the papers the way they used to. They're not watching the, the six o'clock news like they used to. Right. Are you worried or do you think that they actually, that they are well informed? I don't, A, I don't think that's necessarily the only metric of a healthy society. And I don't believe that the new generation is somehow inherently uh, inferior to generations before it. I think it is a natural impulse of every generation to have a nostalgia for a time that they existed in when life was magic and everything worked out and they were, you know, it's bullshit. The whole thing is bullshit. It's, you know. So the old folks saying the kids are just getting six seconds on Vine, it's, that it's more than that. In the same way that the old folks were going, what's with this Elvis guy shaking his hips? These kids don't understand. They don't know what's going on. It's ludicrous. But it is steeped in a, a, a sense of nostalgia. And I think steeped in a sense that is, that is utterly misdirected. And the challenges that face the world today, I think, will be aptly met by a new generation of people that will be well suited for it. I really enjoyed your movie. So was it, is that something you're going to do more of? I, I, I read somewhere your contract wrap, wraps up in a year or so. Oh, uh, you know, I haven't particularly thought much about it. The funny thing for you is, this is what's nice about you. You don't believe a word I'm saying, and I try yes, desperately I to convince I you. I believe most things that you say. I'm, I'm trying to convince you, but I, you have skeptical face. Oh, do I? You do this a lot. Is this one better? <laughs> you do the smile. So if I say, yeah, I haven't really thought about it, you go. Well, it's been... Um, Interesting. Yeah, so thank you. It Dig a, it. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Thank me. you very much. Nice meeting you.